Hi there smart monks and welcome to my channel. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. I post videos weekly so please turn on the notification button and subscribe to the channel if you want to know when I post any new videos. In this video I'm going to be teaching you Pythagoras. I'm going to be teaching you what Pythagoras is, how to apply Pythagoras and also really how to interpret and answer any type of question that involves Pythagoras. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, our first video on measurement. And we are looking at Pythagoras. Um, so let's start at the very beginning. Okay, so what is the Pythagoras theorem? So the Pythagoras theorem is a formula only valid in a right angle triangle. And the formula is r squared equals to x squared plus y squared. Or if we manipulate that equation a little bit, it would be r squared minus x squared equals y squared. Now, don't worry if this doesn't make sense to you yet. But ideally, Pythagoras is the guy who figured out that in a right angle triangle, this formula is valid. And in this video, I'm now going to show you how we can apply this. But before we can get to knowing how to apply the Pythagoras formula, I'm going to look at um, what do R, X and Y actually stand for. So, like we said, this is you will only apply Pythagoras to right angle triangles. Okay, so that's the triangle where one angle is equal to 90 degrees. Right, and we've got three sides to a triangle, and each side represents a letter in our formula. Right, the longest side, which is always the side that is opposite the 90 degrees, in other words, the two lengths that don't make up the 90 degrees, which is this one, is always considered the R in our formula. Right? And the R represents the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is just a fancy name for the longest length, um, the longest si the side of the triangle that is the longest length in a right angle triangle. So that's a hypotenuse. Then the two lengths that make up the 90 degrees is considered our X and our Y. Okay? And the X and the Y are then the shorter sides. Now, does it matter if the Y is on the top and the X is at the bottom? No, as long as you remember that the two shorter sides are considered the X and the Y and that the longer side is the R. Okay, now that we understand the elements of a right angle triangle, let's look at what are the different types of questions they can ask you. Now, at this level, you are only required to understand two ways of answering questions, right? The first way is if they give you an, they give you a right angle triangle and they give you two lengths, right? And you have to calculate the third length, right? So that's the one type of question. The second type of question is if they can, they'll ask you to use the formula to prove that something is a right angle triangle, right? So those are the two types of questions. And I'm going to show you now an example of each so that you actually know how to answer all of the, um, both of these questions. Okay, so the first one say, we're going to look at is how to calculate an unknown side, right? So I've given you two examples here, and let's read the question. So it says, both triangle ABC and triangle DEF are right-angled triangles. Calculate the length of the unknown side. Now, let me tell you quickly that um, in this case, they are telling you that both of these are right-angled triangles, which means that Pythagoras is relevant to this, right? If they don't tell you, and if you do not see that this is a right angle triangle, then you cannot apply Pythagoras. So let's look at this. So they tell us that ABC is a right angle triangle, and we have to calculate the unknown side, which in the first question is AC. So how are you going to do this? You're going to first start always by writing down the formula. Now, if you are being asked to calculate the 
hypotenuse. If you are being asked to calculate the longer side, the side that is opposite the 90 degrees um, angle, then you will use the formula r is equal to x squared plus y squared, right? We r we know is the longer side and x and y are the two shorter sides. Now we have in this question the two shorter sides. We have 8 and we have 6, right? So we are going to place 8 and 6 into this formula wherever we see the x and the y. And this we will, you were taught in algebra where you were going to, we call the substitution. So we are substituting the values for the letters in our formula. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. X is 8 squared and Y is 6 squared. Now it does not matter if you put the 6 first or the 8 um, second, you are still going to get the same answer as long as you make sure that the two sides that you are using that make, are the sides that make up the 90 degrees. Right, so that's R squared equals to 8 squared plus 6 squared. But what is that answer? 8 squared is 64 and 6 squared is 36. So add it together, R squared is equal to 100. Now remember, we are being asked to calculate the length of AC, which is R. We are not looking for R squared. And right now, the answer to this is R squared equal to 100. So if we want to find R, we are going to square root both sides, right? So we're going to square root the R squared and we're going to square root the 100. That way, the answer will then just be R. And so R in this case is equal to 10 centimeters. And you have now calculated the length of the unknown side. Remember, I haven't included it here. Because this entire question is in centimeters, your final answer will also be 10 centimeters. Okay, so that's how you use the Pythagoras formula to find the hypotenuse. Now let's look at the second question. Now, the second question, let's look at what they give us. Remember, we have X and Y, and then we've got R. So in this case, the R here is the longest side, which is the 13, and it's always the side opposite the 90 degrees. Now, the two sides we know here, the X and the Y, you'll see that we don't have one of the lengths. We only have the R now, and we have one of the shorter sides. Now, if this is the case in the question, you are going to use the second formula, which is actually the same formula, we just manipulated it. But in this formula, there is a subtraction and not an addition. So look at this. R squared minus X squared equals to Y squared. Okay? And this is the formula you would use if you're trying to find the shorter side. Okay? So, now that we have the formula, we now have to substitute the correct values in. So by R, we know it's 13, and by X, we know it's 12. So we've got 13 squared minus 12 squared would give us the Y squared, which is what we are trying to calculate. And again, 13 squared is 169 minus 12 squared, which is 144. And if we do that calculation, we end up with 25. So y squared is equal to 25. And again, we are trying to find um, y, not y squared. So we would square root both sides. And this will give us y is equal to 5. Okay, so we've now calculated this length. Now guys, this hasn't been drawn to scale. <laughs> okay, so if you see here, this actually looks longer than this. But if I get to the answer, it's actually 5. Um, but essentially, I'm just trying to show you how to do the calculations. In your exams, the triangles were drawn a little bit more to scale. Okay, so when you are trying to find the hypotenuse, when you are trying to find the longest side, you're going to use the equation with the addition. And when you are trying to find one of the shorter sides, you are going to use the subtraction. And remember now, the y is always going to be the side that you do not know. You must always, on the left-hand side of the equal to side, you must always have both of the values in there. Okay, and that will then give us 5. And that is how you use Pythagoras to find the unknown side of a right-angle triangle. 
So take a moment, if you're not sure how this works, go back, start over from example one right through um, until you sort of understand how this and how, how this works when you're trying to calculate an unknown side. Now I'm going to move over to the next type of question. Determine whether the triangle is a right angled triangle. Now, it's important for you to remember that we say that the Pythagoras is only valid in a right angle triangle. So if you can prove that Pythagoras is valid in any triangle, then that obviously must mean that that triangle is a right angle triangle. I'll say that again. If I have a triangle with the lengths of the sides are valid in the Pythagoras formula, then that means that that triangle has to be a right angle triangle because a right angle triangle, um, Pythagoras only is valid in a right angle triangle. Now, in this next two examples, they are giving you all three lengths and you have to prove whether or not this triangle is a right angle triangle. So what we need to prove is we need to prove the Pythagoras formula is applicable in this triangle. So how do we do that? The first thing we will do is again we start the formula. Now I want to show you we've got r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. This is the valid Pythagoras formula. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate the left hand side and find that answer. Then we're going to calculate the right hand side and find that answer. And if these two answers are equal to one another, then this triangle is a right angle triangle. So let me show you what I mean. Let's start with the left hand side. So the left hand side is r squared is equal to in this triangle is the longest side, which is 17 squared, and that is equal to 289. So the left-hand side of our formula is 289. Now we have to prove the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is x squared plus y squared, and these are the two shorter sides. So I'll say 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 64 plus 225, and this will give you 289. Do you now notice that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side? So r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, which is our Pythagoras formula. So 289 is the same as 289 on the right. And this will then therefore say that triangle ABC is a right angled triangle. Okay. I hope that makes sense to you. Let's try and do another one. Okay, again, they give us the three sides and they ask to prove that this is, or show whether this is a right angle triangle or not. So again, we start with our formula, r squared equals to x squared plus y squared. I know I've given you two formulas. The subtraction formula, I only want you to use that formula when you are finding one of the shorter sides like I did in the previous type of question. In all other places, use the addition formula. Okay? So, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Let's find out what is the left-hand side. So, that's r squared. Now, in this case, the longest side is 24. So, r squared is equal to 24 squared, which is 576. Now, we move to the right-hand side. We have x squared, x squared plus y squared, so that will give us the 7 squared plus the 23 squared. Okay, and this will give us 49 plus 529, and that answer is 578. Now, do you notice that the left-hand side does not equal the right-hand side? So, 576 is not equal to 578, so this is not equal. So what does that mean? Pythagoras is not valid in this triangle. And that means that triangle DEF is not a right-angled triangle. Okay, so in this example, the left-hand side did equal to the right-hand side. So that would mean that this is a right-angled triangle. And on the right-hand side, the left-hand side didn't end up equaling the right-hand side. So therefore, this triangle is not a right-angled triangle. Okay, now let's 
try now I would like you to take what you've learned and I want you to try these questions now I want you to pause the video and try this exercise in its entirety and once you are done come back to view the answers Okay, so I hope you did the questions and I hope you feel like you understand this work and that you felt confident about your answers. I'm going to quickly tell you what the answers actually were for these questions and you can mark to see if you got it correct. So if I look at triangle ABC, here you have to calculate the length of BC. So you have to say the longest side. So you had to use for this because it's one of the shortest sides that you need to calculate. You had to use the formula with a subtraction right and if you use the formula with a subtraction and the method that i showed you in this video for bc you would have gotten 20 centimeters okay then in question two you now were asked to answer the to calculate the longer side right so again you had to use now the addition formula for this one and always check if you had to calculate the longer side and your answer is bigger than the other two sides then you know that you're on the right track. If it's smaller, then obviously you made a mistake somewhere. Okay, so for the last one now, we need to prove that triangle ABC and triangle DEF are right-angled triangles. Okay, so you've given the three sides here, right? And if you had checked these two squared and then this one squared, those two answers were not equal. So this is not a right-angled triangle. For the second question, however, this is a right angle triangle because 61 squared is equal to 60 squared plus 11 squared. And that is your answers. Hopefully you got it right. If you didn't, just try and go back to the part in the video where I explain it to you step by step and try and redo it up until you do get the right answer. This way you can actually identify where you are making your mistakes. And that is Pythagoras. All right, so there's that video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can add it in the comment section below. Also, keep your eye out on my community page on my channel for when you can actually find a link below this video where I will link you out to a worksheet that you can use to actually practice the work you've learned in this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.